Hello, this is Andrew Klein. Today I have a video for you on creating blend shapes in ZBrush. Specifically, we're going to take a look at creating both symmetrical and asymmetrical blend shapes, something that's really kind of hard to do in other programs. Uh, I'm going to start off with a symmetrical blend shape first, something simple like a smile. Here you see I have a head imported and drawn out on the canvas. Uh, I've got my tool palette open, and under the layers palette, I'm going to make a new 3D layer. Uh, I'm going to call this one Smile. These 3D layers are going to allow me to essentially turn my blend shapes on and off as I test this out, uh, and I'll be able to store multiple blend shapes on a single tool. So once I have the layer created, I'm using the Move Brush to tweak the vertices kind of in a soft form, pulling the cheeks up a little bit, pulling the eyebrows up, pulling the corners of the mouth up as well. Um, and as I'm tweaking this here, if I need to open the mouth, I can hold down control while using the move tool, which activates the transpose masking function. And once I have my edge loops masked out with this, as you see, I can go back to the move brush under the draw tool and start opening up the mouth a little bit. Control tapping outside of the model allows me to essentially invert my mask and control dragging allows me to release that mask. And using this functionality, I can switch which part of the model I have masked out. Now, also, I uh, come in here, make a couple little tweaks at the end, pull some of these vertices back, and uh, very quickly, um, I can get this mouse shape where I need it to make a uh, interesting little smile. So once I have the smile completed, uh, I can turn this layer back off and make another new layer and continue on with additional shapes. So here you go, I've got my smile. You can see I can test that out. Let's make a narrow mouth shape as well. Here's another uh, symmetrical mouth shape that we can make. Uh, again, I'll make a new 3D layer and I will rename this one as narrow. Good to keep these names so you know what you're working with. And again, with my uh, move brush, uh, I will come in and sort of pull the corners of the mouth a little bit closer together and kind of push out the lips uh, since the lips are going to have to roll over the teeth underneath. Uh, I've got to make sure that everything kind of squeezes over that anatomy. Uh, again, I can use the transpose masking features to help me open the mouth. So holding down control while dragging out the move tool allows me to mask by edge loops. And then I switch back to the move brush where I can open the lips and kind of pull out a little pudgy beak here. There we go. And we can test this out. Boop, boop, just like that. So uh, I've created a smile shape, a narrow shape. Um, let me create one more shape. I create a smile. Why don't I create a frown now as well? This will be another symmetrical mouth shape. So another 3D layer. I'll name it frown. And uh, again, continue accessing my model here, pulling down the corners of the mouth, pull up the center, kind of edit the nose a little bit. And again, I'm doing this all with the move brush. Generally, when you're frowning, you kind of like flatten out your uh, chin to lip section. So I'm going to use my move brush to kind of do a little bit of that pudging out the chin, essentially. And there we go. Now, with this, we've seen I can very easily, very quickly create symmetrical blend shapes. But I think the real advantage of using ZBrush for creating blend shapes is that I can create asymmetrical blend shapes very quickly as well, and a lot easier than doing this in another 3D program. And I want to show you what I mean here. Let's create a new layer. Uh, and this time around, uh, I'm going to call this uh, Left Smirk. So I hit OK. And uh, I'm going to edit the corners of the left side of the mouth here now. I'll turn off my symmetry by hitting X. And I'm going to pull up just the left side of the mouth make my brush a little bit smaller so I'm just getting that left side. Maybe edit the eyebrow a little bit here. Oops, I got a little bit of that right side. So I want to make sure I'm just on the left side as I'm editing this. 
can really edit that cheek so he's got you know, a smirky little expression. Maybe touch up the nose a little bit so it squinches as he uh, makes this face. And there we go. I've got the left side made. Now, I could export this out and have the left side, but what if I want the right side as well? Well, let me show you the wrong way to do this, and at the end of this video, I'll show you the correct way. If I want the right side, I think one of the easy things you might think of doing is going under the deformation subpalette and using the mirror feature. Now, let me show you what that does. Uh, we're going to go to the deformation subpalette here. And once I open this up, you'll notice I have the mirror button. Now I'll mirror this across the x-axis. And you notice when I hit mirror back and forth, it looks like I just made a right side version. Left side, right side, you see it switch back and forth. Well, this isn't going to be usable for a blend shape because it's actually flipped my vertices around and my whole head will deform inside out if I do that. So let me come back to showing you the correct way to do this after I do a blink as well. Let's do a left side wink first. We'll use the left side wink. We'll look at how we can turn that into a full blink. And then using the same sort of features to copy this over, I'll show you how to correctly make a mirror side. So I'm going to pull these eyelids up, uh, getting them closer and closer. Now I'm going to make the full wink. Um, generally should have an in-between blend shape as well, about halfway there. Um, and just because this is a long process, I will time lapse kind of fade through this. It's a lot of vertex manipulation to kind of get this eyelid rolling over the eyeball. See, I'm pulling this down again, using that transpose masking to help me out in the process. What you see right here is pretty much a good in-between shape. Um, so if you want to save out this stage as well as an in-between, uh, that can really help you get a smooth transformation as you go from neutral to halfway closed to all the way closed. And generally, I will have at least two or three steps in there for fully closing the eye. Now, I think this is where the process starts to get really interesting here. As I close the eyelid up uh, all the way, you see I have a left side wink. Well, I can export this out, have my left side wink. Let's make a full blink. I drag a mask over half the surface, holding down control, and under the deformation palette, I can hit Smart Resim. It protects one side and transfers that information over to the other. This creates a full blink for me. Now I'm going to use this functionality to correctly make a mirror side. Let's go back to my smirk. I have the smirk made. Here's the trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the deformation subpalette. And I'm also going to get the Morph Target subpalette open. I'm going to use these two to correctly make this process work. Now, again, I'm going to drag out a mask, holding down Control, over half of the surface. And once I have this masked, I'm going to use the Smart Resim feature to copy this over. Now he's smirking on both sides, and I don't want that. I just want the other side, the right side of him. So I'm going to store a morph target to protect the features that I've just embedded, specifically the right side, which I copied over. Then I'm going to go to Tool and hit Import and load up the blank OBJ, which was the original facial expression, which restores the vertex positions of the model. Now if I drag a mask over the original side and switch my brush to the morph brush, I can paint back in that smirking expression only on this one side. And here's the really cool part. With this, I now haven't changed my vertex numbering and vertex position. And I can use this as a symmetrical blend shape to kind of get my right side smirk. And I can use this for my right side blink, or I should say wink as well. So continuing on here, obviously I can make a whole variety of blend shapes pretty quickly. Narrow, wide, frown, browse up, or browse down, uh, additional shapes that I've also made for this face. So I hope you find this technique useful in creating blend shapes for usage inside programs like Moto, Maya, um, or 3D Studio Max uh, for your animation process. Again, this has been Andrew Klein. Uh, for more videos, please visit kleinmakelearngood.com or andrewkline.net. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoy the tutorial.